Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. We are here today for another episode of John's Guitar Vault with this awesome prototype from Eastman. We'll check it out right after this. All right, so we are back one more time. Uh, this is my favorite deal to talk about. All, all the guitars that I've collected over the years, and uh, this one's definitely one. Before we get into it, I definitely want to encourage you guys, if you have not done so yet, please hit the like and subscribe uh, buttons, and uh, make sure you do this, because this is fun. I love getting to talk about guitars, especially some of the cool ones that I've got to see or have collected over the years, and you will get to know all about each one of those videos as they get done if you do those two things as well as, you know, share it and comment and let us know what you think. Anyway, this guitar is something that I've had, and I'll be honest with you, when I got it, I didn't know how much uh, use it was going to get. Um, but I'll give you kind of the backstory on it. Uh, we started the store 10 years ago. Uh, in fact, this year will be our 10th anniversary. And as so, we kind of started our relationship with Eastman from the very, very beginning and started working with uh, them doing guitar sales and all that. And it became really apparent quick for me because I had bought, at this point, I had amassed, I think, three of their guitars personally, just to keep. Um, and then I started talking to them and I thought their guitars were great. I think they were kept building better and better guitars every time I had seen a new one, it was better than the last one. So I was like, you know what you guys need to do? You need to build a J200 style guitar. Um, and my pitch to them was this, is nobody's really doing it in a price point that they, I knew that they would hit, which, you know, at that point, you mostly, to do this, you either had an actual Gibson Super Jumbo 200, or you had the Epiphone version of that, which is like a three, $400 uh, laminate uh, version of that guitar. So now you had this multiple three, four thousand dollar guitar, or you had a guitar that sat in the you know uh, you know six hundred dollar. I don't know exactly where those price at, uh, and nothing in between. And I was like, you guys, knowing the quality they were able to build, would build probably one of the best ones out there, and yet be able to do it under two thousand uh, dollars, which I, you know I thought was absolutely screaming deal. So I hounded them and I hounded them. This went on for probably two or three years. And, you know, got to know even more people in the company. Our rep, uh, Tim Nelson at the time, was, uh, you know, the guy I really hounded. And then I got to know quite a bit of the uh, people that were in product development as well. And uh, so then uh, a summer NAM comes up. And it was like, oh, I don't know. I think the day before we left, I get a call from Tim because he's going to be at uh, the summer NAM show. And he's like, John, I got something you're going to want to see. Uh, it's, it's awesome. You're going to love it. So I get to the NAMM show in Nashville and sitting off the side, he says, John, I got something. You're going to love this. Check it out. We pull it out and it's this guitar. And he goes, they did it. They finally did one. And I said, what do, you, what do you mean they did one? He says, yes, we now officially have a jumbo style guitar. And they worked on the inlays and, and worked on the you know different deals. And this guitar is actually the one. This was the prototype. They were going to show it off at the Summer NAM show and see how much interest it had. Of course, tons of interest because it's a jumbo that's all hand built, all hand voiced, sounded incredible, looked incredible, um, and they were doing all the features. Now, this is the prototype. So there has been some changes over the years, but the original one that was there uh, had wood binding, and you'll see it's got the curly maple binding all the way around it, all uh, wood uh, purfling as well. Super high grade uh, maple back and sides, which is really hard to do on this level to get this level of uh, maple, you know, and do it affordably, that was crazy. Uh, it, they were having problems sourcing big enough pieces to do the jumbo. And then this one has the European or Engelman uh, style uh, spruce top. Now, it's a, I think they list it as European spruce on this one. Um, these inlays, this was done by Otto, who's the head designer. Now, these were hand done by him. They have ch since changed them. And if you notice the difference on this was this one has these, there, it's a mix of abalone and pearl. And it was kind of be homage to the original J200s, which had the crowns, you know, the big crown inlays. Um, and they didn't want to do everything exactly the same. They wanted to make it different enough, you know, that it, it, it spoke to that guitar, but also was unique enough. Um, 
And so anyway, these ones are smaller and you'll also notice this guitar has one on the first fret. The new iterations of this later uh, all only started from the third fret on and are bigger. But this is really cool because it has the inlay of the abalone as well as the pearl, um, the wood binding all the way around. Now again, this one has the uh, rosewood head plate since has been changed over to uh, ebony head plate and even now has this really cool art deco inlay on top of it. Uh, one of the discussions that we had when we were talking about doing this was, do you do a mustache bra uh, bridge? And everybody knows that's the J200 look, the big giant mustache curly bridge. And it's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, yes, it says J200, but it's also kind of a tone killer. Um, it's such a big, massive uh, deal. So again, the idea was to take this inlay, cut it in half, and if you notice, it's the same one, and put it on the two wings. Um, and it's kind of, again, brings in some of that wing uh, size that it was there without being a mustache bridge. This is still a very comfortable, um, small bridge uh, area, so it's not killing the overall uh, space of the guitar. And I think they did an excellent job with that. Now, I sat and begged him. Uh, they, you know, again, it was like the whole NAMM show. I was, I was like, the whole team that was there, I was like, that's gotta be mine. I have to have that guitar and I have to, I have to have it. So they're like, all right, let's, let's wait at least till the end of NAMM. We'll see what we're gonna do with it. We'll take it home for photos, get the R&D numbers and all that kind of good stuff. And they did. And then about a month and a half, two months later, I get a call says, John, we're sending you a guitar. And I'm like, um, so I ended up keeping it. Um, it has become one of my probably most used guitars, which I didn't think it would be. I wanted to have kind of a country, you know, style guitar, but I started using it in sessions and it was really funny. I go into recording sessions and I have my pre-war D18 and I have a bunch of dreadnoughts and uh, different ones. But I was layering a lot of guitars at that time, especially for slow uh, material. I was, I was doing a lot of producing of albums and working on quite a few different ones. And I wanted secondary guitar sounds to go along with, especially for slow material. And every time I would take this out as my secondary guitar, it's so big, it's so bold. <laughs> I mean, it's huge, you put it, you know, e, anything in E. And I did a lot of, you know, vamping stuff. And since it was so big, it sat in those tracks so well, yet it has the maple to be bright enough to kind of fight some of those over, you know, boomy jumbos that a lot of times happen. And again, for laying in tracks with uh, other things that I was doing, acoustic sessions, it became my, you know, my main guitar to always bring. Now it surprised a lot of, uh, you know, producers and engineers because they're like, you know, really a big jumbo? I'm like, yeah, trust me, it'll, it'll be cool. It'll sound really great underneath there. Um, when I first got this, I also had another idea that I wanted to do, and I haven't done it yet. I haven't been brave enough, but this does not have a guard on it at all. I'm still looking for the perfect guard because I... I'm not a naked guitar guy. I like to have a pick guard. What I really want on this guitar, but I'm so scared to do it because it does sound so good, I want a big double guard. I want that Bob Dylan, uh, you know, Lefty Frizzell, uh, massive guard, double side guitar on here. But again, it's such a pretty guitar. It sounds so good. I have not yet uh, been uh, able to kind of jump into that. But anyway, that's the kind of story of the AC630. This became the Eastman AC630. Since then, they've changed a few things, like I said. The uh, inlays are bigger, uh, not one at the first fret. They no longer have the wood binding, which I think the first couple of years they kept that. Now they've gone to the uh, celluloid binding to be a little bit more like uh, the standard uh, Gibson style J200s. Um, but it's still a great guitar and now even available in Sunburst, which uh, again, I've kind of, I, I got a bad habit here. I, I want to own everything and I, I'm trying to learn as an adult. I don't need to own it just because I like it. I need to find a use for it and I already have a great uh, jumbo so I don't need the sunburst but I kind of want one. Um, so anyway, that's the story of the AC630 and my guitar. There is no label inside here at all. You uh, cannot see it. So it is truly the prototype to the AC630 and to me, one of the greatest uh, guitars that Eastman has built and continues to build. So, built. 
continue to build. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This was another guitar uh, from my collection, and I love telling the story. So we'll see you next time for another episode of John's Guitar Vault. <laughs>